Many times I don't speak about it. But when I hear people talking about poverty, poverty, poverty is the cause of the high teenage pregnancy rates, poverty is the cause of the high school dropouts, poverty is the cause of ABCD, oh my God. Is that true? Could that really be the reason why our girls are dropping out of school? Poverty? Long time ago, when some of you, the young people, were not born, the time we were growing, our environment was quite different from the environment you are in today. I cannot compare my testimony with what you are going through. But what I want to say is to bring the aspect of poverty. Some parts of this country, during the war, their mini war, went to South Sudan. By then they called Sudan. I come from West Nile. My parents ran to the exile. That was early 80s. When it was time to come back, there was another war in South Sudan, 1986. That was the time my parents came back. When we came back, there were no schools. Schools which were there, some of them were destroyed. I, for one, went to a school which we were supposed to start it's now the current Metu Secondary School. We were the pioneers of that school. But when I recall my life story from the time I studied secondary, primary, up to now, and reflect on what our girls are going through, it's a mystery. Our time, we did not have such sophisticated structure that the girls are sitting in right now. We didn't have dormitories. They were deliberate, they were just old structures. Old soaps. We were not sleeping on beds. We didn't have mattresses to sleep on. You bring your papyrus mat, you bring your mat, you put down and you sleep on. If you have blanket, you put one down, you use one for covering. We didn't have library. We didn't have laboratory. When I'm going to school, 17 miles, which is equivalent to over 25 kilometers, I have to carry my luggage on the head and walk. There were no border borders, tell me in 1986. There were no motorcycles. What transport was available were bicycles. There were very rare taxis, at least up country where I came from. We walk to school. When you reach school, there's nothing like visitation. There is nothing like pocket money. We had only one pair of shoes, which you put maybe you are going for a debate. But we are very good Christian young girls. We were in YCS. We used to put on these shoes they cut from the tire of the vehicle. Some of you have never put it. That is what we put on. One pair of shoes for class and wear one pair of socks. And where we sleep to where you go to study, the classroom, it's over one kilometer. Every morning you walk, you come back, you walk, you come back. If our school is to go for laboratory, you walk six kilometers to the next school, which is the mother school. That is Moyo SS. You walk on foot, you come back. Now tell me, out of all those, we had a vision, we had a dream. 
And we are very happy, Young Christian Association. We joined the debate. We are cheerful young girls. We did not think about that we are sleeping on mats. Which girl of today will sleep on a mat? <laughs> they will look at which inch of the mattress they should be bought. Which girl today will go to school in only one pair of uniform? Which girl of today will walk to school with a luggage on your head? After school, you come back to brew alcohol. If you don't brew, you have to walk over 20 kilometers to buy sorghum and you make yeast out of it to sell to get school fees. Despite all that, I passed my O level in 1988, when some of you are not, most of you were not born. After some years, I thought I came to A level in comfort zones in Igulu, Sacred Heart Secondary School, where I am now sleeping on bed. Guess what? The war was very intense. The LRM war. You can't read. If you have to read, you block all those ventilators such that they don't see you in the night. But we are focused. We were determined. We had a vision. Our slogan was campus all day. We had a slogan. We see people from campus. We did not know where Makerere was. We did not know where university, but we knew campus. That was what it means. And indeed, me and my colleagues, we passed to go for medicine on government scholarship, despite all that challenges. Now tell me, a girl from nowhere, who did not even have desks in the class, to move all this far to complete a PhD and stand before you as a minister. Then you tell me, this young girl in Kaliro Primary School, this young girl in secondary school in Kaliro, where there is a dormitory, there is a solar for reading. We didn't even have light, by the way, I forgot to tell you. We used to use, for reading, a tin. There is what we call Kadova, a tin where you pour diesel or petrol, diesel, paraffin, cardobo. That is what we use for reading. If you are lucky, you go with this glass light and light the lamp. That is if you are rich. But majority of us, we are using this small light. But today, which school doesn't have solar? Which home doesn't have lights for the girls to read? Which girls are not transported to go to a boarding school on a transport on a border border at worst? Which girls do not have decent laboratory, library, dormitory? And tell me, Mr. Chairman, it is the poverty chasing girls to get married. Young people, tell me it is because of poverty you are running after the rich people to get their pocket money. It is because of poverty. You are running after sugar daddies for their money. Did you know how they get that money? <laughs> now, if I not tell you my testimony, did you know how I reach where I am now today? Did you know how that rich person got that money? You should feel ashamed to run after that money to run after the sugar daddies. They worked for their money. You should also work for your money. Because it is really, really frustrating. I speak with the passion. When I hear it is poverty, poverty, poverty. There is no poverty at all. When you compare today, with the time we are in school, when you compare the lives the girls are living today, 
with the period when some people are studying, I don't see any reason why our God should not study. So young people, I left the challenge into your hands. I left the challenge into your hands. I want each and every one of you as a young person who is here today and who is out there listening to us to know that life is a journey. Life is a journey and God has created everybody with a purpose. There is a purpose for life. There is a purpose why you are created. There is a purpose why you are existing as a girl, as a boy. Once you ask yourself, why am I created? What is the purpose of me? Why am I existing in this life? Ask yourself, have a moment for soul searching. Have a moment to reflect into your life. What do you want to be? Why has God created you in such a manner, a unique person? You will have been a boy or you will have been a girl, but in his own wisdom, he created you in his own image as you as a unique individual. That is why we bring in the Christian values and integrity we bring in the Christian norms. We bring in the Christian doctrines. That's why we have this ch the church teachings. If you, as a young person, has not put God in the center of your life, you will not know where you are going, why you are existing, why you are created, and the purpose of your life. So my first point to you as a young person today, reflect on your life. Life is a journey. Why am I existing? That should put God to be in the center of your life. Everything that you do in day-to-day -day life should put God in the center of your life. If you do not do that, that's where you get all these problems that we talk about. What do you want to be? What is your vision? What is your goal? When I left Kampala this morning, my destination was here. I knew I'm coming to Kaliro. I left Kampala knowing I have a direction to follow. And my destination is here. Where is your destination in life? Where are you going? What is your vision? What is your goal? That is the question for you to answer. If you do not have a vision, you do not have a goal. That means as you move in life, any strong wind, any temptation can blow you left and right and you are gone. But when you have a focus, you know what you need in life, you will never fall off your vision. Your vision can be molded and be helped by a role model. There are many role models in life. My colleagues both talked about role model. There are role models who can help you achieve your dream. There are people right from your parents, your teachers, your friends, your brothers, these are people who can help you to achieve your dream. So I want you to be a role model to other youth, 
to be champions to other young people. And you can only do that if you choose a role model for you as a person. As a young person, you need somebody to help you to look at whenever you are going. Whom do you want to be like? Many of us looked at a role model. Many of us are where we are today because we looked at others and we say we must be like that person. So as a young person, you can achieve your vision, your dreams, your goals when you look at a role model. Our first teachers are our parents. The parents are the doorkeeper for their children. Everything that goes out of the house is controlled by the parent. I've heard a lot about poverty. I don't want to comment about it right now. But I want to ask our parents to be responsible parents. Today we see our young people like you getting access for, to all information without the notice of the parents. We did not talk about the ICT. We did not talk about the computers. We did not talk about the phones that we use. The youth have access to all information through the ICT, which is not bad. But are those informations helping you to achieve your dreams? Are the information on the phones, on the internet, helping you to achieve your dream? Are those information destroying you? Are your parents helping you through those information? Those are the questions that we are asking today. But above all, our attitude, our behavior, the way we perceive life, my attitude, does it help me to achieve my dream as a young person? Does your attitude help you to journey in life? Does it help you to grow towards God? These are some of the things that we should really, really help our young people to understand.